Warning. Loud audio incoming. Warning. Loud audio incoming. Hello everyone and welcome back to Steel Division 2. Today we have with us a very special video. Um, I saw a lot of people doing a lot of panther... <laughs> panther attack is what I call them. They are useless. They are not good. You should stop doing them. And this is what I'm gonna highlight in this video. I'm going to tell you all about... Um, how about what you should actually build in your tank division? Technically, you shouldn't be taking tank division at all. Um, in this meta, I mean. But they can be useful. Um, especially, you know, played by good player, a tank division can be very threatening. Played by noobs um, in a respectful way, you know. You guys know how I am. You know, I call myself the king of noobs. So when I say noobs, it's respectful. But, you know... Noobs play these division, they think they'll kick ass because these things are powerful. And I'm just here to tell you, stop. You're not going to beat anyone like that. Or actually, you, you, you might beat other noobs that don't know how. But if you want to get better, and if you want to start beating better players than you, then stop doing that. And at least... If you, want it, if you want to use a tank division, build it the way I'm going to show you just now. Alright, so let's go. If you absolutely want to play one of the cool divisions, you know, like, um, let's say, uh, 12 SS Panzer Hitler Juden. Is there anything better than this division for wearaboos? For people who love the German army. And I mean... There's nothing wrong with that. I myself love the the German tank division. I think they're cool looking. I think their weaponry is awesome. You know, we, we've been bred since our very young age to think that the Germans are cool in, in fashion, you know? Obviously not in uh, bureaucracy and, and their, their policies, but um, in fashion, we've been, we've grown up to think that they're cool. And, and it's true, they are cool looking. So. This is what most players goes at first. They go for the cool German division. And if you want to play them, I'm just going to give you some pointers on how to actually build your tank tab. I'm not going to go I am going to go throughout the whole deck, but I'm I'm going to go mainly, you know, this is to show you what to do with the tank tab. Now you see here, you got Panthers and I mean, how cool looking is this panther? I personally prefer it with the other skin. Uh, and we're gonna go take a look at it right away. This is with the Zimmerit, which was used to deflect anti-mine um, that you would throw on the tank and it would stock. This would use to deflect that. And it, wa it was proven not to be very useful. So let's just go and we're gonna put our tank into a cool looking skin there. So we have this, let's go to tank, medium tank, uh, Panthers are considered medium tank in this game. Oh, wait, let's just go for the Germans here, boom, 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 ah, there you go. So, um, and actually they were medium tank, I don't know why I say in this game, they were actually medium tank. Alright, so we're gonna pick this skin, which I think is much better. I think it's way cooler. Wait, let's put in the sun. Oh, there's no sun on the side. Okay, well. Yeah, I think the skin is much better. So we're going to apply that. And uh, the Panther D here, I have this skin. If not, it's that. I think this one looks better. And for my Panther 4, I have this one. We also have this one, the more regular one. I play with this one. This one is much better. Panther 4 J is with this. 
and we can also bring like this I think this one is better it's it's much cooler but uh, <coughs> sorry yeah so we're gonna use this skin here let's go back into the battle groups and here we are with 12 SS the young kids the the 17 years old 16 maybe you know that we're fighting the war all right so here we have our cool panther how do you want to build your tank division in order to have good support <coughs> let's think about that first of all the panther d is 140 points because it has less frontal armor this one has 120 millimeter and the panther g which is 10 points more has 10 millimeter more so you might be tempted to take the Panther G, but is this really warranted? Well, first of all, let's look at the availability. You got four Panther G in phase B, okay? And in phase D, you get six Panther D. In phase C, you get nine Panther D. In phase C, you get six Panther G. Now, if you bring Panthers, you want them vetted up. You don't want to bring these dudes unvetted because they are very expensive. All right, so boom, you get one double vet in phase C, Panther G. You get three double vetted Panther D in phase C. And they cost a bit less. So if you're going to take one or the other, uh, I would recommend the Panther D. Why is that? Well, first of all, 10 millimeter of penetration can do a world difference sometimes, depend who you're fighting against. Um, but it's not that much, okay? And... On top of that, you know, they do the same amount of damage, except the Panther G does have APCR rounds at 1,700 meters that will do 250 millimeter damage. But do you really need this in 1v1? Because this video is for 1v1. In 1v1, no, you don't need this. And it's very rare you will encounter another division that fields King Tigers or... IS2, you know, you can't afford to take a loss or two worse than worse if it comes to you losing because the enemy had a, K, uh, a KT, then take that loss. It's going to happen one in every 200 battle. Not even. I mean, I personally, I haven't seen a King Tiger in a long time. And the last time I saw one, the dude started up with two King Tigers and he brought more and I destroyed them all. And I didn't even have, you know, powerful tanks. I had the 10 guard tank corps and i destroyed him with bazooka you know artillery um i think i did have a panther d you can watch i made a video about it also it's called uh double kt opening or something like that anyway so really you really don't need these panthers there's no use for them other than wasting your money plus they can destroy they get destroyed very fast because tanks in this game are have a mind on their own and they will shoulder side armor which means they'll get destroyed so you could take a panther g if you want just in case you know i would tell you it's a waste of points what i would recommend is you get two star panther d in c face first of all build your deck in a balance income for when you're new maverick is very good but if you're going for a tank division build it for balance put three panther d in c face two in B face, and I guess you could take one as well in A face, but you don't need it in A face. Then that's all you need. <coughs> Sorry, that's all you need. And if you're going to, because, well, I'll tell you why, because they're very expensive. And if you lose five Panther Ds in the battle, then you're gonna lose all your Panther Ds, no matter how much you bring. So now, now that we have these settled up, Let's think for a second. Look at that. You can bring the same amount to double vet of leaders. So you know what? Let's delete these guys. And let's take two double vetted leader tank here. And then if you manage to keep these guys alive, they'll be able to give one veterancy to the, the one coming in C face. And then these guys are going to be three star. And this is the top of the, it's the cream of the cream. It's what you want, three star Panther Ds. Now, you could take also Tiger leaders in phase B. 
you would get the same amount that you would get with regular tanks so might as well take them leaders and if you have troops around yourself then they'll be vetted up so now we got four tank leaders in phase b and you're going to use them for the for the rest of the game you can also take you know take pen take tigers for c face or you could take them you know just like that eight of them and in b face try to take them uh, with one vet there'll be two vet with uh, these guys around and and that should be it for your heavy tanks now since you're playing balance i would say you know do maybe eight tiger is a bit too much four is enough and take instead 15 panzer four then here in phase b well wait why 15 in c phase it's because the game can drag on for 50 minutes and more in rare cases more so you really want to have enough troops to if if you do get dragged into a long battle at least you'll never you know most likely you'll never run out of tanks with 15. you could take them one star and have 11. that's also a good choice because you do have leaders around here so then they'll become two star if they're around leaders <coughs> But at this point in C phase, usually it's just like you throw everything you got forward and you know hope for the best. I personally will take them unvetted. For phase B, you will want them vetted up. So you get five vetted up Panzer IV in phase B. And that's probably gonna be all you need, especially with you know your Panthers and Tigers. Uh, I don't think you and you got more tigers here as well. I don't think you're gonna be able to call in more than five Panzer IV. So, you know, just five double vet should be good enough. And then in A phase, we could call in two double vet Panzer IV H, but in this deck, we have the Panzer IV G, which is a little bit less uh, better. I think they don't mention it in the stat, but it has to do with the turning of the hole. So, uh, from what I understood anyway, so you could take, you know, three double vetted like this and that should be more than enough tanks for you to use in phase in all phases <coughs> and that is because you are not going to send them into suicide mission the goal here is to get your tank and keep them alive for as long as you can try not to engage other tanks with your tanks uh, maybe the tank maybe the heavy tanks you know these you could engage if you can engage other tanks try to with your heavy tanks try to engage medium and light enemy tanks don't engage a panther d against another heavy tank if you see them don't engage a panther d against another panther d uh, if you're a german versus german i mean of course sometimes you'll have to and that's fine but try not to do it because that's how you lose your tanks and you can destroy the enemy tank with much better than your own tank so this should be what you're aiming for with a german tank division now if you now the way you need to deal with enemy tanks is the anti-tank tab okay you look at that you got um six jagdpanzer four take them in phase b and you don't need them vetted up uh i mean you could it's always good to vet them up but you don't absolutely need to uh, you already got a lot of support here vetted up. Let's just take, you know, take numbers here. Take one card of Jagdpanzer IV in B phase. And these are going to be the one you use to destroy the enemy. They got 130 mil of frontal armor. They are turretless. So that means they will face the enemy when fighting them. Uh, they do 145 millimeter damage, which is enough for most of everything you will meet up on the field. And then in phase A, you will use, first of all, you will want to take them with the Opel Blitz because the Opel Blitz are faster than the KFZ-70 of 10 kilometers an hour. And in phase A, that makes all the difference in the world. You always need the fastest troop you can. So in phase A, take the Pack 40 with the Opel Blitz. This is basically all you need for anti-tank seeing as you're playing the 12th SS Panzer. Um, you could take another pack 40 in C phase, but we're getting very expensive here in 4. You could also take one, the same 
you could take six of them in a face and that would be really great but they are very expensive at four activation points so let's not do this um, then what else do you have to deal with tanks in the recon tab always check the recon tab for stuff you could use the Bu the Boity Firefly um, it's a very good tank it's very expensive though but it does have a 170 millimeter armor 2k range so you know it could be a good idea to take it um, you could use these dudes as well um, these guys are very good to destroy uh, medium and light tanks because look at that, they do 100 millimeter damage uh, at a distance of 1250 meters, and these are heat rounds, so they don't lose um, they don't lose their penetration over distance. And then in AP, they do 55, which is not the greatest, but it can still destroy light armor like this, and you use your heat rounds for um, larger tanks. So six of these. And then you take four of these for to support your infantry, to support these guys, because you know if there's a bazooka unit coming in, uh, you can get these guys to support. So you know, Boiti Firefly SPWs are gonna be there to support your Panzer tree, your Panzer fours in the early game. And then you got Pack 40s. You put them at a distance, hiding, ambushing the enemy. And this is how you deal with uh, enemy tanks in the first phase. And then let's go check the air. Uh, there's no anti-tank air here, so that's too bad for you, but it doesn't matter. Um, you will want to take fighter planes, three of them for the whole game, you got enough. Then again, the, the goal here is to keep these units alive. The more expensive a unit is, the more you should babysit it, okay? And If you're going to take a Panzer Division, the airplanes are going to be very important. So I would recommend getting two fighter bombers and then you could get two rocket fighter bombers. And why the rocket? Um, the reason is, well, first of all, these are not used on tanks, okay? Use them on infantry. Same with, ideally, these guys use them on the infantry. They are there to support your infantry. But why the rocket in B-Face is because these guys shoots at 750 meter range. And by uh, B-Face, the enemy will have a lot of anti-air. So these guys can shoot at range. So it's perfect for that. Uh, whereas these guys have to go 200 meters, you know, to drop their bombs. And often they'll, they'll be just short of being um, destroyed by anti-air. So this would be a good idea. They are very expensive, it's true, but you need fighter planes in a in a Panzer division. Artillery, you would be tempted to get the Ammo, uh, to get you know the Vespe. Don't. They're not worth it. They they don't have a lot of shells. You you're gonna spend a lot on um, resupplying these dudes. Instead. Um, you could go for the Waffremen. They do have 2.2k range, which is good. Uh, you get two of them. So you get uh, two Waffremen in B phase. And that means you need to go to your support tab and get some supply truck. I like. I personally like to get a lot of supply trucks. I feel it helps because I do get into a lot of uh, 55 minutes long games, and then I need all. Of, it's very. It's not rare that I spend all of my supply trucks, especially when you bring things like the Verframen, and then I would also recommend bringing four Ezekiel Z half track, and then you can get 81 millimeter mortar for phase A. So this basically what you should get now keep in mind you're not gonna have you're not gonna be able to counter battery the enemy's artillery and that's not necessary in 1v1 but if you do want to then do get them you know um <coughs> They only cost one point in this deck, so it's really not the end of the world. You can get four of them in phase C, and they come with their own ammo trucks, which are, they, they do get expensive, but there you go. So you get the ammo trucks for these howitzers, and then you get the ammo trucks here for everything else, for the Wolframen. These guys take a lot of ammo. Then you're going to need a lot of ammo for the SDAKFZ, and you're going to need a lot of ammo for these guys. So I personally feel that 
six uh, set witness this that 10 Opel Blitz supply truck with four multi ammunition trucks uh, so that brings 14 ammo trucks in the game I think it's warranted because you do have a lot of them and try to use the the trick here is to try to use these half track trucks as much as you can because they're very good and they can destroy tanks like that and now the trick with these guys is to take them in pairs in in, in quadruple um, what I do is I bring all four of them over the course of the game and then I select one target usually I, I destroy tanks with these so I select a tank and I tell them to shoot that tank and and you you can destroy tanks easily with 81 millimeter mortar so why would you risk 140 points or 135 points unit elite on top of that on destroying enemy tanks when actually you can do it with your mortars so you do spend 400 points on mortar which is a lot um, throughout the course of the game but then you can destroy pretty much any tank that the enemy filled plus you can support your infantry really well um, just you gotta shoot them keep them alive I made I actually made a tutorial on artillery so um, you can just take a look if you want more details but yeah I feel like this is more than enough okay and then what else do we have anti-air is gonna be very important because if you field all these tanks but the enemy has cluster planes and you know the IL-2 cluster planes are very good um, Germans decks sometimes have you know uh, clusters as well or AT rocket and then you you spend 135 points for a tank and it get destroyed easily by enemy airplanes so you know you need anti-air and it needs to be good anti-air so what you can do here is take the 20 mil with the abstract 20 mil put these to double star that's going to put you four anti-air that you can call in in phase a double vetted now these are going to be dangerous unvetted they're not that dangerous double vetted they are pretty dangerous then you're going to want the flak 36 um you could take six of them because since the air the aa buff um, these are pretty good but if you really want to kill planes then take them one vet here like this and then you know maybe you could take four verbelvin verbelvin anyway you could take four of these although if you don't micro well i wouldn't recommend taking these take uh these instead you could take them with ammo trucks as well that would be a little bit excessive but you know what if we do this We'll come here, we'll remove these guys. Because when you call in your anti-air, if they do come with ammo trucks, then just use these ammo trucks in C phase. You'll use these to supply whatever you need. So yes, it's gonna make your 88 expensive, but you know what? Don't use your 88 on the front line. Don't lose them like that. The enemy will just mortar them. He will artillery them. Use these flak 88 far behind and use them for anti-air rather than anti-tank. You don't need anti-tank 88. You got Jagdpanzers, you got, you know, you got a lot of troops that can do the jobs. You you have these guys. So you don't need to use the 88 as anti-tank in this deck. Use them to suppress the enemy so that the enemy cannot go bomb your tanks. And then if you really want, do take this. I mean, it only costs one activation point. So you know but anyway so uh, this is more than enough personally personally i would take these flag 36 unvetted because the game is going to be long you're building up this deck for a very long game so you don't technically need it support weapon um you're going to need machine guns and take it with one vet use the horch 108 because it's the fastest gun it's the fastest trucks you can actually yeah, it's the fastest. So use this one. There you go. Then in phase B, don't use the fast trucks. Use the second fastest, the Q-Build. Just because you want to keep these guys for phase A. And this should be more than enough MG42. You don't need them vetted up in B phase. And then you could use these grill as well if you feel like it. They're very good. They shoot HE at 2K. Just, you know... They don't, they're not expensive, but try to micro them as well. Um, then you want 
plane chores with the BMW R75 because it's the fastest. It goes at 90 kilometers. And these you're going to be used in the start of the game. You're going to be using them to take flags early. So um, you want to get to your own flag before the enemy gets there because the enemy will come at you with these guys. So you need to bring these guys on your own flags before the enemy gets there. And this should be more than enough in the support tab. Now we've got 43 out of 50. We're back to the infantry uh, deck. We might delete some stuff to make more place for the infantry. Um, but the infantry is pretty important. Now personally, I don't play much with veterancy. But since uh, we're talking noobs, noobs here, um, maybe you would want a double uh, vet your infantry like this, like this. We're going to take the Panzerfaust because they have Panzerfaust. They can deal the enemy damages. In B, in C face, you don't need to double vet. I mean, you don't need to vet up your infantry. Just take the numbers because you're going to need them. Also, don't take the SZKZ. Not useful. They cost, they're very expensive. They're not that useful. Just, you don't need that. Then, you're going to need CQC infantry. Count set, count set, count enough. Yeah, you're going to need CQC infantry. Um... You know, in A and B phase. Now we're out of options here. We're going to delete some stuff. I personally am going to delete this guy. I personally will delete this dude. I don't need them. Sis said to enough. So now we can take another infantry tab. And we're going to take more pioneers. Because um, you want to be able to fight in the forest. And to do so, you need these explosives. And personally, and that's just me. I mean, for you, I would recommend getting CQC um, in 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 the early game. Me, what I do is I take them in the late game, and I take them with half track because these guys they're not your line infantry. You don't need them to get fast. You don't need them to be. You know, they're not quite expensive. They are uh, 25 points. So if you take them with the half tracks, uh, they're only 35 points. It's decent and. In this situation, it would be good to have half-tracks. So, you know, there is a time and a place and a unit to bring half-tracks with. Your line infantry is not. Your CQC or your special elite troops is. So if you want half-track, and I personally, I do, because in the late phase, I want as much unit on the ground as I can possibly bring. So I'm going to use that. And then we only have six infantry in phase A. So that is definitely not enough. Me, personally, I would remove that tiger because I don't need it. And then we're going to be adding the... We're going to be adding these. You could take them vetted up, but, you know, for a face, I personally don't bring veterancy. And I know people are going to hate me for that, but, you know, I'm, I'm keeping in mind here that you're a noob. Uh, you probably want numbers because you're not going to micro very well. And you know what? You could even just just go ahead and take infantry, unvetted up. And personally, that's how I started playing the game. And I did become very good at the game playing without veterancy. And so obviously, this is my personal opinion that when you're learning the game, you don't need veterancy. You need numbers because your units are going to die often. And I feel like the tank division don't really allow you to get veterancy. Uh, of course, if you want to play with veterancy um, with your infantry, then, you know, go ahead and experiment. It, it, it would be good. You could, uh, you know, you could remove one plane and then, you know, well, wait, first of all, take a mental image of this deck. This is the deck I'm going to recommend. And I'm going to put it in the... Uh, I'm going to put it in the description because, um, was it John was saying that to me? Um, let me check two seconds. Yeah, it was Jonathan. Jonathan, a viewer of mine was saying I should start putting the decks and I, I, I always forget. So now I'm going to copy this deck before I change it back. Battle group. Twelve SS here. Export. Battle group has been copied. There you go. I'm gonna write it down somewhere just to make sure. <coughs> All right. Um, so that would be your deck for the noob. That would be it. Um, 
but yeah you could remove these guys they are very very expensive uh, if, if you know what you're doing in the air you could even remove these fighters and just keep the double fighters but make sure I mean the fighter bombers make sure you don't lose them because these are going to be very important especially in C phase what I do recommend is you use them as much as you can in phase A if you can afford to bring them and then in phase C I mean, in phase B, stop using them when there's a lot of anti-air in the in, in the sky. Unless the enemy has a breakthrough into your own line, and now you're not uh, they're not covered by AA, then use these planes. But if not, just don't touch them. And then in phase C, when the enemy has less AA because you've killed them with your artillery, start bringing them again. So what you could do is this bring you know these dudes boom boom then bring these dudes in phase b and then we're gonna have personally i'm just gonna have these dudes then and then you can take you know um the leaders you in phase a i would not recommend to bring your leaders with the fastest troop because they're going to um, they're going to die. <laughs> they're going to arrive before your infantry and they'll die. So, you know, bring them with... Uh, they don't have regular trucks. Well, that's a bummer. Well, anyway, bring them with the Kubel then, if that's the only choice you get. Then you can bring a second uh, leader. And we're going to use the one with the Panzerfaust, just in case. And there you go. So you could do that. Um, this will give you double star veterancy on your units. Um, then you got the tanks as well that will give veterancy to close by infantry, bring them to double star. Or that. Whoops, did I forget something here? Damn it. I did forget something. I forgot that I actually need infantry in C phase. So we're gonna just add this dude then. And in A phase, we're gonna go get these dudes and there you go these dudes do come with the awful blitz so that's gonna give you um two leaders in a phase which is enough just use them where you attack or where you think you should defend the most um two leaders there and then you'll have six in b phase and then you have these four tanks and then you still have one point and it's in the anti-air department so anti-air department i would personally go for eight of these uh, but just to be cool, you can bring this guy. Um, they're just 25 points more, and they're, I think they're much cooler. They do 1.6 damage too, so that's more. And um, yeah. So this could be 12 SS noob veterans. This could also be it. And But, you know, I think you're going to be lacking in Air Force. Um... And I think you might lack in infantry as well. Now, playing a deck like this with only 12 infantry in A phase is going to be really difficult. It's hard. And I personally, I like to play my deck like this. I like to struggle in A phase. And as it goes, it gets easier and easier. But anyway, so this was the little tutorial I wanted to give you guys. Um, I'm going to save this battle group and I'm going to send it as well. So this is the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's going to help you out. But really, you need to stop bringing Panthers. And why is that? I'm going to publish another video after that. And we're going to see exactly why I got the perfect example. So thanks for watching. And uh, stay alert for next video because it's going to be directly related with this one. And you know, guys, I'm close to have a thousand subscribers. So I don't say that usually. But why don't you just sub? Half of you are not subbed to me. And you still watch my videos every time. So just sub, get me to 1K subscribers so I can start making money doing these. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good day. Bye.